That, uh, that wasn't fun. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update. The one about is beginning to wonder if it was ever going to happen. So yes, guys, if you uh, you missed the highlight here, the channel did get hacked. I'm going to make a full video later about this whole experience, really to raise awareness so this doesn't happen to anyone else because it's just such a stupid thing and it's such an easy trick to fall into. It really, really is. So I'll get that a little bit later, but you know, it. Uh, I got to give thanks to Google. They were able to help me recover everything under 24 hours it was a very stressful 24 hours i'm sure you see the bags and the red eyes i mean i was it was it was very stressful very very stressful but uh for the time being we are back up and running though it's gonna be very different because i am not using my computer it's uh it's gonna be it's gonna be real interesting because uh, i'm just I'm a little too scared to use it at the moment but we'll get into that like i said all in that video i'll be doing that this week like i said but as for the weekly update i feel like it is time to do that a little delayed, but uh, let's go ahead and get into it with uh, what am I reading? Well, guys, there is no week like a Stephen King release week, so I did read after I got You Like It Darker. read the whole thing, and the thing was, is like Jaime and Fuego and I were supposed to be doing something this weekend, and then this whole thing just kind of threw a wrench into that. Uh, I have to get with Jaime and see if we're still going to be doing that content, because I'm not sure yet. But uh, as far as this goes, I did enjoy it quite a bit. I am glad that King has listened to a lot of the outcries of we are tired of the detective crime stuff. Can we get back to some of those dark, dark tales? And there are some, a little bit of both, really, because I feel like most of these stories are pretty messed up in the way that we uh, we like King to be messed up. And then some of the things in it were still very much, yeah, you're, you're going back to your, you've read too much Michael Connolly recently. And I think that's just, this is something that he's just really, really into now. He really wants to be a crime detective novelist, I, I feel like. So some of that stuff is there. Some of the stories in here is kind of weird because, and he does this in his short story collections. They'll range anywhere from like eight pages to like 250 pages. So the first story here, Two, uh, two, two Talents of Bastards, is that what it's called? Excellent. I mean, just amazing stuff. What an opener for this. Where I was like, wow, that almost felt like a more focused version of Dreamcatcher. Lots of drops in here to other stories. So, and if the multiverse on it would actually be quite uh, a little bit more connected than I thought it would actually be. And for you Duma Key fans, you do get lots of mentions of Duma Key in this whole story. Uh, D Danny Coughlin's Bad Dream was the only one where I was like, look, this one's a kind of over long. It feels weird to say that in a short story collection because I, 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 I did him. A patron loco called me out for this. He's like, you said you don't like short stories because right when they're getting going, you feel like the end. And now you're sitting here complaining that this one is a little too long. Uh, I think there can be both because, like I said, his short stories do range from like eight pages to 250 pages. And what I mean by I felt like Danny Coffin's Bad Dream was a little too long was it didn't need to be that long to tell the story that it told. I felt like it could have, in a collection like this, been really, really pared down and told the same story. But there was only, I, I think there's nothing that I really hated in here. There's a couple I was just like, yeah, okay. That was a thing that I read. But for the most part, there's some really good stuff. Rattlesnakes is excellent. I really, really enjoyed The Answer Man. So he has some stuff in here. But guys, The Fifth Step is one of those really, really short ones. But holy shit, the ending of that really, really did floor me. So I'll get into this a little more in-depth here, one way or the other, be it with Jaime or by myself. But uh, very, very pleased with it. I am very, very happy that I did go ahead and decide to read this on release because I did not read Holly uh, on release, but with this one, I was very, very happy with what I found. And uh, his his short story collections are they're low commitment, but guys, they're obviously really, really good stuff. And I think that when King uh, actually have it feels a little reserved. Sometimes that can be better, you know, where he doesn't let some story that could have been told in 200 pages roll onto 700 pages. You don't really have that problem in a short story collection. So uh, one of the better ones, obviously, it's not up there with some of the greatest, like Night Shift or or, or anything like that. But I I, I do feel like it's one that's uh, probably one of my more favorites he's done in the last, probably in the 2000s. So uh, yeah, I definitely say check it out. I was very happy with it. Didn't really get very much further in House of Assassins because I was reading it up until You Like It Dark came out. And uh, then right when I was ready to go back to it, that's when all this hacking thing happened. And I wasn't reading while that was going on, guys. I was a nervous wreck. But uh, yeah, so I don't really have very much ad about House of Assassins because I think I've read 10 pages since the last time I told you guys about it. But that'll be kind of the goal this week. I did actually pick up 
One Piece Volume 24, which is the beginning of the Sky Island arc. Uh, I forget what the first one's called. Uh, there's some, something else in Ender Sky Pia, some kind of island. Anyway, uh, it's all part of the Sky Island arc. But uh, I didn't really get that far into it. This really is going to be a vacation plan for me as you finish up uh, the one uh, the Sky Pia arc of One Piece and uh, kind of talk about it there. I don't know if Philip and I are going to get together that. He seems to be doing just fine with One Piece content on his channel because, uh, yeah. College professor talks about One Piece is much more interesting than Mike's book reviews talks about One Piece, I, I, I guess. Uh, what am I going to read? Well, obviously, the goal is to finish House of Assassins this week, and that'll kind of wrap up the month before we get into the new one here. And then I'm going to be starting first in June. It's going to be that Quilluminati with Brian over at Belltube, Philip, and, of course, John from Talking Story. Uh, we are going to be doing The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez, a story I know nothing about. So it's going to be very exciting. I feel like Brian has already kind of set the expectations that if it's really great, it was all of our decisions. If it's really bad, it's just John's choice. So he just wants to kind of lay that on him. But uh, I, I don't I don't feel, feel like any of us are going to actually hate it. I've, just, I've gotten that comment a lot of, I'm really excited that you're reading it. I just don't think you're going to like it. So we'll see. We'll see. I've had people tell me that. I mean, I had people tell me they didn't think I was going to like Shogun, you know? So it's sometimes people watch the channel a lot. They think they know your likes and dislikes. And sometimes something hits you that might not be in your comfort zone at just the right time. And it works out. So I'm going into it with a complete open mind. And I am excited to do it. So yeah, I am leaving for vacation a week from today. Uh, we are going on a nice trip into the Caribbean and for seven days. So it should be nice and fun. Lots of re uh, relaxation and reading time. Now, I'm going with kids. So, you know, you, your your vacations can vary when you do have the kids with you. But it's one of those things where I feel like there's enough for everybody to do that everybody can kind of get some of their downtime as well. And I will be probably taking that and One Piece with me on the trip. And that'll be what I do read during the week. Uh, this week on the channel, did do a couple of videos before everything kind of went to hell in a handbasket. I did get out my review for the Silver Blood Promise by james logan that one was actually sent to me by tour so uh exchange for an honest review i believe is how it is put so got that out book i, I did like a bit uh I, I did have some problems with it uh and it's, that's one of those things where i felt like everybody says that i'm way too positive on these things and i'm not very critical but like that was a very mixed to positive review i did enjoy the book i am looking forward to book number two but i thought it had a lot of problems and i mean that just in like a it's a debut fantasy novel this kind of way obviously he's a really good writer. He, he's, he's got me interested enough in the story. I feel like there's some things probably could have been done a little better, but I think like that happens with every book. No book is perfect or whatever, but I, I liked it a lot, but I think it was someone in the comments that actually say it felt like a Dan Brown novel. Get this item, then go here and talk to this person. Do this task for this person so they'll tell you what you need to know. Then go there and find this magic item. Yeah, I did feel like that quite a bit. Now, I know we throw around the term as they're kind of Dan Browning it as, as an insult, but you know, the guy sells bazillions of books, so he's doing something right. But uh, yeah, I think that made a lot of sense. I, I compared it to a 16-bit a Super Nintendo RPG by Squaresoft. Where it just felt like fetch quest after fetch quest. But I think what really made the book work was the dialogue was really good. And I thought the duo of Lucan and Flea was excellent. And yes, guys, if you go into this expecting Liza Locke Lamore, you're going to be disappointed. Because I know this comparison, it's getting a lot. You're going to be very disappointed. So just go into it and treat it like its own thing. I think you'll have a good enough time with it. And I'm, I'm happy that I read it. And like I said, I can't wait to read book number two. If book two was out, I'd read it right now. So I think we see that I did enjoy it enough to do that. Books that I wish had sequels, this kind of just stemmed off of a question I get asked a ton always is, you know, if Stephen King could write a sequel to any book, what would you have it be? And I said, I feel like one of the things that makes his books great is he doesn't have a lot of sequels. He's like, like Steven Spielberg in that way. I make that comparison because Steven Spielberg for years, people pushed him to make a sequel to E.T. And he didn't. I feel like that has kind of made the legacy better. So I think the fact that he hasn't wrote sequels to a lot of these books is kind of what makes her legacy just, just thrive a bit more. So I kind of flipped it into, you know, a Stephen King book and then nine other books that are kind of standalone in nature that I would have liked to have seen uh, a revisit to or kind of a follow-up to. And it kind of varied, you know, some modern, some classic, some sci-fi, some, some just, you know, regular literature. Some things that I feel like he could just... I would have liked to have spent more time in that world, visit those characters a bit more, see what happened to them years later. It's just a fun topic to always think about. I think, in truth, a lot of those books are great because, like I said, they didn't get a stand uh, a follow-up and because sequels almost always let us down. So is it really something that you want? You think you do and think you get it, like Dr. Sleep. And you're like, ah, well, that kind of wasn't what I was really hoping for. But I did think that those were 10 books that I was 
saying, if you wanted me to say, these are the 10 books I wish I had a sequel to to read right now, those were the 10. But again, always videos like that are just kind of conversation starters. But I'm glad you guys did participate in that because I had a good time talking about those books. Uh, the discussion that I did with Philip should be up on his channel now. I'm going to make sure that I link that for you. It's always a great time when I can talk to Philip about anything at all. And uh, I think that Philip and I could turn the camera on and probably talk all day without a problem. And that was the same instance there. So my return to Dear Dr. Fantasy, the show that I did name for him. But you know what? He gets full credit because he actually sang Dear Mr. Fantasy, the song that I based that off of on his channel. So if you want to look that up, you can find that. He didn't do it in that video, even though people were requesting for him to do it. But he did not do it in that video. But uh, again, I thank Philip for inviting me on the channel. It was a great time. How about some next week plans, guys? Look, I'm not 100% back up and running here. So I wanted to get this out and I want to get out that video talking about getting hacked. And really, it's to, it's not a look at me video. It's a, I want to raise awareness for other booktubers because uh, my audience is bigger than a lot of people this has happened to and people with audiences bigger than me, this has happened to them. So I want to make sure that I raise awareness for people that this is how easy it is to fall into this trap. And this is what they're trying to do. So, uh, you know, I, I've gotten so many comments about you should use uh, uh, two-step verification. I had that. There's a way for really good hackers to get around that kind of stuff, guys. And it was really, really scary. So I want to make sure that I get this out so nobody has to go through that and how to better protect yourself. And hopefully I have myself protected now because I'm not going to lie. A lot of people this has happened to, after they got it back, it happened again. And I'm trying to prevent that from happening because... It could have been way worse than it was, and I'm not trying to find out if it can get worse than it was. So I want to make sure that I get that video out, talk about the experience, talk about how easy it is to fall into that trap, and what I did to get it fixed. Because it is not really clear what you can do to get this fixed. It was actually quite surprising when I followed the breadcrumbs of how to get this recovered. And uh, yeah, I want to make sure that I share those so everybody does know. So uh, I'll be talking about some uh, June 2024 reading plans. Obviously, I'm leaving in a week. So I want to make sure I let you guys know what I'm going to be starting in June. So I'm calling that one, aka my vacation reading plans. I kind of told you it was Vanished Birds in One Piece, but I think Vanished Birds isn't that long. I'm going to have some downtime. Maybe I'll have some other things. I'm going to talk about everything I plan to read in June. And if you want to join me, you can. Uh, I would say it's going to kind of be collabs week, but I'm not really sure. The plan was to have several collaborations this week, but right now I feel like I don't I don't know how this is going to set up to if I could be depended upon to have a live stream. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I do. I can do some things from my laptop. Maybe I could stream from my laptop, but we'll see. We'll see. I am trying to do something for You Like It Darker with Jaime and Fuego. We're going to get together about that. The plan was originally to do something on my channel and then do something over in Hail to Stephen King. Obviously, there's some problems with that. Guy that helps him out with a lot of that stuff is not really doing that anymore. So it's kind of hard for him to host. So we're trying to try to figure things out. So it's just kind of a, things are fluid. Things are fluid. I'll give you an update when I got them. But I will be talking about Held, uh, not Held CV. <laughs> I will be talking about You Like It Darker one way or the other sometime this week. Uh, I think that I'll be doing uh, another talk about nothing. Uh, talk about nothing that I do have scheduled right now for Friday is going to be with Johan over at Library of a Viking, one we've been putting off for a while, but our time zones are so different. So I'm off on Friday and we'll get together around lunchtime, Texas time. That way it's just, you know, after dinner time where he's at and have our talk about nothing. And that's someone whose brain I'd love to pick because I got to figure out how he comes up with such interesting topics. And because uh, I think they're just really, really, really good ideas that he comes up with. And uh, yeah, just all kinds of things. Just talk about this experience to him. Maybe he can teach me how to kick ass at Instagram like he does. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe uh, there's nothing really I can do on Instagram because I got this face, you know. But uh, it, next week plans are really just kind of, uh, kind of loose right now until we make sure that I've got everything up and running the way that it can be. And that means I got to figure out a PC solution. I don't know. We'll talk about it soon. Uh, TV and movie talk, obviously, guys, are not a lot. I mean, we... I didn't. I was in a panic attack while this was all going on. So basically, just watched some TV to kind of clear my mind. Uh, we did our family movie, which was Men in Black. Kids had never seen that before, and they loved it. I mean, are you surprised? Men in Black. I'm actually impressed how well that movie has aged. You know, you go back and watch it. I was expecting the. I was expecting the special effects to look terrible. They were pretty good. And I think it's because most of it was practical. And then you had uh, like the the talking pug dog. I was trying to explain to my kids the talking pug dog was such a huge thing in the late 90s that everybody was going and buying pugs after that. It really was just that big. I mean, it was like a 20-second bit in the movie, but uh, really, really fun. And I haven't broken to them yet that the sequels really aren't that good, at least to me. But uh, they actually they enjoyed it quite a bit. 
And I think they're starting to get to the point where they're okay with like a nice standalone movie not having to watch all the sequels because I think the experience they've had besides Terminator is they don't really like the sequels very often. And I will save them from that pain if I can, but I do want them to make up their own choices. So Men in Black, yes, uh, has aged well. Guys, I quote this movie nonstop. I think I do best of the best of the best, sir, <laughs> with honors, but y'all ain't laughing. I do that all the time, all the time. Nah, girl, nah. So there's so many things about that movie that I just love. I've watched it a dozen times at least. And getting to show up with the kids was a lot of fun. Wife and I did start Three Body Problem. We only watched the first episode because I'll tell you in a second, I kind of got hijacked by my kids on this one. And we were very, very into it. Uh, like I said, I think this, most of the stuff that happened in there, I do remember a lot of it from reading the book. And the thing about that is I only got about 60% through the book, guys, before I stopped. And that's a me thing where I always said I thought that would be better for TV because they could actually do something a little better with the character work. And it feels like they, they are. I was right on that so far. So we had planned to watch all that. And then my oldest comes downstairs. He's bored, wants to do something. He said, you know what? I think I'd like to watch Stranger Things. And I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, finally. So we watched like five episodes of <laughs> Stranger Things. And uh, it's really it's really awesome that he's uh, you know he's vibing with it. He's, he's really, really liking it. And uh, I, I just... I love because I can say, hey, this is kind of what, you know, a lot of the stuff that I got. Now, look, 83, I wasn't the same age as those kids, uh, but I don't feel like the 80s changed a ton between like 83 to 88, really. So a lot of the stuff that the kids do in that, besides the fighting monsters part, <laughs> deal with parallel dimensions is, uh, is stuff that I did and, you know, kind of hanging out with my friends and stuff. And he's really is kind of saying he, he, he kind of feels the Stephen King vibe of it. And I love that, that that's getting through. But uh, really, really great. Uh, I mean, it's just that first season. It's just so damn well written. It's just so, so, so well written. And I think it's the third time I've watched that first season. It's just, it's so damn good. It really is impressive. And the thing that I'm really, you you notice new things when you rewatch Stranger Things. Like you notice things uh, you know, about the upside down and things that you didn't notice on your first watch. Something this time I'm kind of going through. I'm like, how did Mr. Wheeler land Miss Wheeler? Because he is a smoke show and he is a dork. So, you know, I don't know. Sounds familiar, right? <laughs> so, hey, uh, this nerd's got to take the wins where we can get them. So guys, that's uh, my week. It's like I said, it's been nuts. It's been absolutely crazy. And just trying to get everything back, it just felt like a whirlwind. I mean, it was, like I said, less than 24 hours, but it just, it was a nightmare. Uh, the way I kind of put it when I was talking to Ryan Cahill about it, I felt like someone had stole my car and was drinking and driving in it and driving recklessly. And the cops told me, yes, we know someone stole your car, but we have to wait until they finish their joyride before we can return it to you. That's kind of how it felt. It was a... Uh, it was very, very nerve-wracking. Didn't get a lot of sleep, a lot of panic, and uh, yeah. Hopefully, for now, I mean, for now, I'm saying it's over. Hopefully, that does last, and we don't have a relapse of this, as I've seen on other channels. So, uh, I want to thank uh, Retro Rick. I want to thank Supercuts Delight for sharing their experiences. Those are two channels that are bigger than mine, and they shared their experiences with this, and they did kind of help get me on the right path to finding out how to get my channel recovered. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's scary. It can happen to anybody, guys. It really, really can. No matter how big or little your channel is, it can happen to anybody. And it's so crazy because I've taken so much cyber awareness training with the company that I work for, and I can't believe I fell for what I fell for. It's just, it's not as simple as you're thinking. When everybody's like, oh, did you click a link? No, I didn't. I didn't. And we'll get into it. So it's just, uh, it's nuts. It really, really is. And we'll talk about it soon. So thank you guys for your patience if you stuck around. I know I, I did lose like 2,000 subscribers while that was going on. They were live streaming Bitcoin stuff on my channel. And I understand. I understand. But I hope people will find their way back to the channel since hopefully it is working out. But guys, that was my week. I would love to know what your week is like. Are you reading? You like it darker? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. So drop in the comments, guys. Let me know what you're watching, what you're reading, what you listen to, what you are playing. And I will talk to you there. <laughs>